Hi everybody, welcome to a new series of tutorials on AUM MIDI Mixer from 4Pockets. The tool which has been recently released that allows you to automate or create automation inside AUM, which is a fantastic thing which saves you a lot of time, to be honest. Uh, before I start, I have a number of codes to give away, so please follow the video description for uh, uh, instruction on how to participate in the giveaway and also check the comment section and the top comment to, sh to see if the giveaway is still running. So you should really start uh, using MIDI Mixer to launch the standalone version because it will give you the option to continue in the standalone version, which I don't recommend, or to also launch a UM using one of the internal templates. But let's choose the A channel for now. As you can see, it has loaded now um, <clears throat> a UM, and uh, it has created the, a, um, a configuration for you. You have all the eight different channels there, which are comes pre-configured. The output goes through a mix bus A, which is then received uh, through the last channel, which act as your master channel. You have an instance here of MIDI mixer, so let's open it. And uh, as I show you in a moment, the controls are already mapped. So if I move up and down the fader, you see here the fader on channel 8, and also you see the fader here on the master channel as well. You can mute like so, and you can solo as well. Okay, and then you can also change uh, pans here as well. Double click to go back to the original settings. Okay, so <clears throat> um, typical use of uh, a mixer would be to automate, for example, volume so that you can decide when one channel is coming in. So let's start with a simple example. So uh, let's say, for example, that on channel A, uh, we have a file player as well on uh, the second channel or channel B. We have another file player. <clears throat> Let's load a song, a song that I composed, so don't have problem with uh, copyright claim inside YouTube. So magic moment for that one in a loop mode. And for the second channel, let's choose something like harmonic program in a loop mode as well. If I play like so, both tracks will play. And you hear the uh, metronome tick, so disable that, it comes enabled in the template, okay? But as you can see, uh, both tracks are now playing. Let's say that I want uh, track one to, um, to increase as a volume. So I want to have the start of both tracks uh, as volume zero and gradually the first one coming in and then the second one coming in as the first one is actually um, going away. So there are different ways that you can achieve that. The first one would be to do it manually uh, inside the UM, which will take a lot of time for the recording, not great. And there are two further ways that you can do using the MIDI mixer. So first of all, you need to arm a track for recording. Let me show you just the first one on the first track, how that works. And you need also to automate the master recording like so. Let's say that both are to zero, like so, and then you click play, and at this point you move your fader, and then down, like so, perfect, you stop, and as soon as you stop, you see here inside MIDI Mixer that the play button is enabled for track number one, and you see a graphical representation of your automation. You can see that it is automation for channel number one because here you have selected channel number one and component fader. And here it allows me to introduce a view for a pan, mute, solo, and other MIDI CC as well, which you can see from a graphical representation. So this will be one way which you can do manually. Of course, I can click the disable the play and I can also click on delete here and delay, <coughs> delete all fader for all the different channels. Now, another way would be to create what they're called snapshot and save those in different state. So let's say first two channel uh, down to uh, zero as a faders. So I click on the camera to create a snapshot and I save that on position number one and I click yes. And the position number one, snapshot number one is now yellow. Then let's say that I'm um, Actually, before I move on, I have recorded now that state 
with a transition of instant. That means that I can move from one state to the other immediately, but I don't really want to do that. So let's say that I want to have three seconds between to move from one state to the other. So in this case, I have to re-record that state on state number one <clears throat> because I changed the, uh, the, the transition in to three seconds. Now let's say that the second state will have a, a volume uh, up for track number one enough for track number two so I click a snapshot again and I save on the second position I click yes like so and um, uh, snapshot number three uh, the opposite between the two tracks in terms of volume uh, I save that on S3 and I click yes now the reason this is important is because look what happens now when I click on S1 you can see it's gradually going down which is really cool now let's um, see this uh, in uh, in action. So let's go back to the beginning of the track. Um, I can arm individually the track, so I can click here uh, on the uh, recording button of the master track or output track. Uh, I can hold and it will activate all of them. You still need to enable the master recording and I click play. Now let's click on snapshot number two. Snapshot number three. Snapshot number one. And let's stop. Okay, so now we have a, a recording for channel number one, as you can see here, for the fader, and also for channel number two. Okay, let me show you something else now. You can create a loop. So we are in channel number one. Let's click on loop. Let's define, for example, the region, like so. Let's go to channel number two to ensure that this region includes, uh, like so, uh, the second, uh, the, the automation of the second channel. Then you can activate the loop, which will position the red vertical bar at the beginning of the loop, and you can click play. So really, really cool. Now, you, there are other things you can do here. You can, uh, when you have something selected, like a region, you can go on the clipboard, you can clear the selection, paste, copy and cut, and paste value, which comes handy. You can delete different option for deleting. Um, you can undo the last action. You can also decide to paint and on the region if it is active, or if the region is not active, of course, uh, outside as well and you double click on the region to remove it. You can decide to create lines like so. You can decide to click and hold on the line and you can snap to bit, which gives you better control. And of course you can delete. Okay, like so. You can load mixes, you can save mixes as well. And you can also change faders, lock them like these all together at the same time. So you can go uh, up like that. There you go. Okay, and you can unlock it for that. Other things you can do, you can, um, you can, for example, change the default of merging further automation to replace the previous one, which uh, comes handy, and then you have also additional settings for the mixer options here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this first tutorial on how to use MIDI Mixer. I'm sure we will all use it in a lot of our composition inside the UN. See you next time. Bye.